If you're using current gen gaming consoles like the PS5 or Xbox Series X, outdated audio or video equipment in your home theater might be limiting your overall experience. But can using something like O-Ray's 4K HDMI scaler with audio now mixing and eARC extraction unlock the full potential of your current home theater without breaking the bank? So I do want to give a huge thanks to O'Ray for sending the HDA 939, the 4K HDMI scaler with audio down mixing and eARC. I had to look at that because it's a mouthful. They sent this out to me. They didn't sponsor this video or anything. They did provide this sample unit to me for free in exchange for the review, but I am approaching this just how I would any other review that I do. If I spend my own money on this, how would I feel about it? They didn't sponsor this. They didn't tell me what to say. They're actually gonna see this video live when it goes live for everyone. So they have no input in this video other than they sent the product to me, and that's it. So what I wanna do real quick is go over what you get in the box. Then I'll talk about why you'd even want a device like this. Like what does it even do? And then also how I use it. And then some use cases that you might find useful. So in terms of what you get in the box, you open it up, you're gonna be greeted with the warranty card, a manual. You also get an RS-323 or Phoenix connector for connecting to your computer if you have that functionality. And it allows you full control of the device through your computer. You do get some mounting brackets and some machine screws. In terms of the power brick, um, you actually get a two prong guy, no big deal. It is kind of bulky, so you'll need to make sure that whatever you're plugging this into, surge protector, battery backup, whatever, has the space available for it. And then you actually do, on the other side, have a locking mechanism. So this actually just screws in to the back. It prevents it from being yanked out. So if you're ever kind of moving cables around or need to do anything there, you don't have to worry about it coming loose. Now, in terms of the actual device, it's pretty hefty. Honestly, the first time I opened the box, I was surprised to learn that most of the weight of the box is this guy. It's pretty heavy. I mean, I reviewed this uh, a couple months ago or maybe a month or two ago, a couple months, month or two is the same thing. But I reviewed this, I mean, this is super light, but this is solidly built. This is a full metal casing and no plastic here other than maybe on some of the connections on the back. So you don't have to worry about any type of interference making its way into this or out of it and interfering with anything else. On the side here, I don't know if you could see, uh, might be kind of hard to see on either camera, really. Um, you have these metal vents on both sides for heat dissipation. So on the front for the LEDs, we have power, which lets us know it's getting power. HDMI in, out one, and out two. So this is basically just looking to see if there's any type of signal being sent out or being received, and it will let you know here. Audio formats, you have PCM, Dolby, DTS, DTS HD. So this is basically letting you know what is being processed by the O-Ray on the audio side of things. On the audio input side, you have HDMI in and ARC slash eARC. So you could actually just select between the two with a little button just to the right of that. And if we flip it around uh, on the back, you have an HDMI input. So this is useful if you want to plug a device in and have it separate both the video and audio into two separate HDMI cables. And then to the right of that, we have the HDMI output. So the first output is just for video. And this will allow you to downscale the video from 4K to 1080p, which you can use the dip switches, which I'll get to in a moment. But this is also where you would plug in for eARC or ARC and CEC. Now the second audio output is audio only. So this is gonna be the decoded, eARC and ARC signal. So this is just gonna be strictly audio. Then we have digital audio outputs. We have Toslink, coaxial digital, and then we have the downmixed audio out, which is left and right, just standard RCA cables. And then moving on, we have the dip switch settings. So there's eight of these total, only seven of them actually do anything. Number four doesn't. And then the last two things, you have the RS-232, so that Phoenix connector I was talking about, and then the power input. Now, if you flip it upside down on the back, you actually have all of the dip switch settings on the bottom. You can just quickly reference if you're trying to set this up and you don't wanna dig into the manual and you can just look at the EDID settings and adjust it from there. So that's what you get in the box. But why would you need a device like this? Like, what's the point of having something like this, like who would use it? Well, in my case, I have an LG C1 OLED. You might have a C2 or a, a, the new C3, or you might 
be getting a new Sony or have a newer display. And you might be using a new console. You might be using the Series X or PlayStation 5 or even a PC. And you wanna make use of all of the features of that TV, right? So like HDMI 2.1 features like variable refresh rate, 4K 120 Hertz support, things like that. Well, to do that, you either need a new receiver that has those same functionalities in it. So HDMI 2.1 capability. If you don't have that, then you need to plug your consoles directly into the TV and then use something like arc or optical output to get the audio from your display into the receiver or soundbar, whatever you're using. But the issue there is you're sacrificing audio quality in order to unlock those HDMI 2.1 features on your display. So what do you do? Well, a device like this comes in and basically tricks your receiver and your display into thinking, hey, I have eARC support on both sides. I can send the full bandwidth signal so I can get uncompressed PCM. I can get Dolby Atmos, the full tilt of all the audio functions from my console and my TV without spending a fortune on a new receiver. So basically the O-Ray HDA 939 takes out the need to upgrade your current receiver if you have newer components and want all of those features. Now this does way more than that and I'll, I'll talk about that in a moment. So that's why you'd want something like this so you won't have to upgrade your receiver. Now, how easy or difficult is it to set up? Well, honestly, if you're buying this for the eARC functionality, it's pretty much plug and play. So if we look on the back, we have the HDMI outputs. We don't really wanna focus on the HDMI input because we just wanna use the eARC functionality. So on your display, you wanna look for the eARC port that's on the back of your display. On my LG C1, it's the input HDMI 2. So I'll plug an HDMI cable there, and then I'll plug that into the HDMI output number one. Now on the Array, we'll plug an HDMI cable into the HDMI output two, and that is the audio that will go to our receiver. Now, very important here, and this is where some people kind of get it wrong, and I've read reviews for this, where <laughs> it, it does happen. You don't wanna plug the HDMI output two from the array into the arc port on your receiver because this won't work then, none of it will. We wanna use an HDMI input on your receiver and it could be anyone. It could be aux one, aux two, cable satellite, DVD, whatever you wanna use. As long as it doesn't have the arc label above it, you're good to go. And then from there, we plug it in and then on the front, we select the audio input as arc slash eARC. And then finally, we go into the display on the LG. I go to the audio or speaker settings. I tell it that I have wired speakers and that I am using an arc device. And once that's set, I go into the advanced menu and just select eARC. That's it. I have all the audio options available to me on the Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5 that I would if I were plugged directly into the receiver. But I also have all of the HDMI 2.1 functionality as well. So 4K 120 Hertz support, variable refresh rate, auto low latency mode, HDR10, Dolby Vision, all of that stuff. Now, the one thing that the LGs do not support through the ARC port is DTS, so I don't have that as an option, but that's a limitation of the display, not of the array. And that rhymed. I'm getting pretty good at this. You don't even need to adjust any of the dip switches on the back if you're using this for eARC extraction. That's it, you don't need to touch it at all. Now, a couple other scenarios that I'll mention, you have a device, like let's say in this example, an Apple 4K TV, and you want to separate the video side and the audio side and output those as two separate cables, two separate HDMI cables. Well, in that case, you take the output from the Apple TV into the HDMI in on the Oray HDA 939. And then on the output side, HDMI output one is your video. So that would go to your display. Output two would go to your receiver's input. And then after that, you would need to go over to the dip switches and basically set it to what your display supports. Now, it took me a while to figure that out because if we look at the bottom, there's all of these options that you have. But a really simple thing to do is if you're just plugging this up to a 4K display with HDR and all that stuff, you can just go down to the third from the bottom. It says copy EDID or EDID from HDMI output one. Set those dip switches to that. So both five and six, the dip switches are turned down. Number seven, we leave it and then number eight, we turn it down as well. And basically what that's going to do is it's going to ask the display, hey, what can you do? Can you do 4K? Okay, you can. Can you do HDR10? Okay, you can. Can you do Dolby Vision? But then basically it will just allow you to set the Apple TV to whatever the display can support. That's the setting that I ended up 
using for most of my tests because it just worked flawlessly. I was able to access Dolby Vision on the Xbox because if I set it to anything else, I could never turn on Dolby Vision on the Xbox Series X. So you do have a bunch of other options, but for most people, like I said, that third from the bottom is probably the one you wanna go with. Now do be aware that you are limited to 4K 60 Hertz with 444 color using the HDMI input on the Array. You cannot do 4K 120 or anything like that if you are using this device to separate the audio and video into separate HDMI streams or cables. Some devices don't have multiple outputs. Some Blu-ray players do. You'll have a video out and an audio only out. But for like an Xbox Series X, if you have a display that doesn't support 4K 120 or variable refresh rate or any HDMI 2.1 stuff, but you have an older receiver that's just 1080p, well, you can use this in that same situation that I just talked about with the Apple 4K TV to separate the audio and video. And then you have the video going out to your 4K TV and then the audio going out to your receiver. Now I also tested out the downscaling features on the video side and the down mixing features on the audio side. There are very, very kind of specific use cases for doing that. Um, especially if you have really, really old equipment. I think for most people, those kind of settings will pretty much go unused. But as an example, if you have an older 1080p TV and you have, let's say a Series X or PS5, and you want to make sure that it's always being downscaled from 4K, then you could use this device to downscale that from 4K to 1080p. For the audio down mixing, it works just like you would think it would. So I tried it with an Onkyo that just, for whatever reason, would not accept a Dolby True HD signal or Dolby Digital 5.1 signal from a Dolby Atmos track. I was able to use this to actually output Dolby Digital 5.1 from that Dolby Atmos track. It was pretty cool. So honestly, the O-Ray 4K HDMI scaler with audio down mixing and eARC works. Like it just works, especially for eARC extraction. So what are the overall pros and cons of this device? I mean, it's not perfect, right? So on the pro side, you have the ability to use your older receiver with your newer consoles and displays and still get all of that e arc functionality and HDMI 2.1 functionality without sacrificing anything. You get full audio quality and full video quality and you don't even have to buy a new receiver. And speaking of new receivers, it's still cheaper than buying a new receiver. The build quality on this thing is pretty awesome. It's kind of built like a tank. It does support HDR10, HLG, and Dolby Vision as long as you set those dip switches properly. If you're using it for eARC extraction, you don't have to worry about that at all. The ability to downscale 4K to 1080p all the time is pretty cool if you only have a 1080p TV. Another pro is the ability for it to downmix pretty much any audio format to two channel. Also the ability to extract the audio and video into two separate signals and output that under two HDMI cables is pretty cool. If you're using it for eARC extraction, it's pretty much plug and play. So that's a huge positive, that's a huge pro. You pretty much just have to hit one setting and you're good to go. You just have to make sure that your TV set up properly. Now, it's not all sunshine and daisies and nothing's perfect. And the same goes for the HDA 939 from O-Ray. So one of the biggest cons of this device, and it might seem like I'm nitpicking, but just hear me out, are the LEDs on the front of this thing. I have a completely light controlled room. I've taken a lot of time and effort in getting it light controlled to make sure that there's no light coming from anywhere else. When you have a device like this, that has no dimmable LEDs, these things just light up the room. And they can become distracting, especially if you're like me, my entertainment stand is in my field of view and I see it right there. So in a completely dark room, in a dark scene, these lights really, really stand out. So I've, you know, I've turned it to the side and that, that kind of gets rid of it. I might end up putting some electrical tape on it just to not have to worry about it, but then I can't see like what it's doing. I would like the ability to at least turn those off. And a way to do that, and kind of maybe a recommendation for O-Ray to look at into the future, like the next revision of this product, I noticed on the dip switches, there's eight, but number four isn't used at all. It says reserved in the manual. Um, it says reserved on the back. I don't know how hard it would be to wire that into the LEDs on the front, but a simple toggle, like where by default they're on, you flip that switch down, number four turns them off. That would be a really, really cool, nice to have feature. Now another con would be the somewhat confusing dip switch configuration. Now at first, yeah, there's a, there's a lot on the back of this thing to go over. And uh, because I was testing each one, 
I was able to get really familiar with like what each one does, but most people don't want to do that. So uh, they might just look at all those settings and be like, I don't know what to do. I need to reach out to someone or I might just send this back because it's too confusing. And that's honestly not what I want for anyone. So uh, my recommendation here again is to use that third from the bottom. Now, another con here, while it does come with uh, mounting hardware, which is nice, um, there are no like little felt or rubber feet included for the bottom. So uh, if you were to put this on another device, like say on top of it, and that device is kind of gloss black or even matte black, the chances of it scratching are pretty high. Ask me how I know that because I scratched the 4K Blu-ray player I put this on top of, not even thinking about it. And uh, yeah, no big deal. It was like a cheap 4K Blu-ray player. I think I paid 90 bucks for it, but including little kind of black rubber or black felt pads to put like on the four corners of this, they'll just go a long way. I mean, yeah, you can go to Dollar Tree or Dollar General or something and pick them up for like a buck, buck 25, but just having those in the box would be a nice little inclusion considering they already include metal mounting hardware. I'm sure like little felt pads or something wouldn't be too much of a cost to include. And it would just be a nice little touch. Be like, hey, we know you're probably gonna wanna display this or put this on top of something. Uh, we got you covered. You're not gonna have to scratch anything. So lastly, I wanna talk about price. And I saved this for last because I don't think it's really a pro or a con. It just kind of is what it is. So at the time of this recording, the O-Ray HDA 939 is 199 US dollars. And that's kind of pricey. To play devil's advocate and talk about receivers for a second, so, I like the receiver I have. I still want to upgrade eventually, but having something like this, spending 200 bucks on this now, getting another three to four years out of my receiver if I want it, is much better than going out and spending two grand on a new receiver right now. And you may be in the same boat. You know, you may have a receiver that you've paid three or $4,000 for. Maybe it's a high-end Marantz from a few years ago. Doesn't do any of the HDMI 2.1 stuff, but you love it. Instead of like having to try to figure out, well, how can I budget for a new receiver? Do I want to spend more money on a new receiver? Are all these HDMI 2.1 features on next gen consoles important to me at all? Do I have a display that supports it? You have to answer all those questions for yourself before you can say, hey, I need this. The price itself is kind of pricey, but if you kind of put it into the perspective of, I don't need to buy a new receiver, I can use what I currently have. To me, that makes it worth it. Is it worth it for you? I can't answer that for you. You know, ultimately you have to decide if something is too expensive or not. And that just depends on the situation and your financial situation and everything else. So if you need all the other features, it's even more of a value. Overall, for me, like the build quality of everything does speak to the price. So it's extremely well made, extremely sturdy, and should last for years to come. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful at all, please feel free to hit that like button and also let me know in the comment section below. Also, do you have this device? Are you looking for a device like this, like an O-Ray HDMI audio extractor? anything like that, uh, let me know in the comment section below. If you're using something different, I wanna know about it too. And also, just thank you so much for watching this video and supporting the channel. If you haven't subscribed and you liked what you saw here, consider doing that as well, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you in the next one.